News at Noon begins now. A nationwide ban on bump stocks now in place, but it could soon come with a legal challenge. Plus, take a look, a gorgeous start to our afternoon in downtown Spokane, but there is another round of drizzles that are headed our way. We'll let you know when. Coming up. And it was not one small step for women. NASA scrapped the first all-female spacewalk with an astronaut from Spokane. This has been an incredibly difficult time. Honestly, one of the worst of my entire life. Jesse, Jesse Smollett's record is wiped clean. Prosecutors dropped all charges accusing him of lying to police about a racist and homophobic attack. Well, thanks so much for being with us here on Creme 2 News at Noon. I'm Jen York. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Papetti. Good to see you. We are looking at partly cloudy conditions as we head into the later afternoon. So we have Evan Narani standing by in the Weather Center with a check on what we can expect. That's exactly right. We have seen uh, all the rain showers that occurred late last night into this morning clear out of the region. So really what we've got now is uh, mainly partly cloudy conditions outside around the northwest. Uh, we'll throw up satellite radar where uh, things are mainly dry. We saw light late last night, just around 10 and 11 p.m., some uh, light drizzle around the Spokane area. It only accumulated to one one hundredth of an inch of rain, but over toward the panhandle, that's where some of those showers lingered. This morning we saw plenty of snow making its way down at Silver Mountain. It has led to a beautiful afternoon around there. This is our live camera out there where plenty of people are enjoying that fresh snow. And if you are one of those skiers or snowboarders that are still uh, in the mood for some skiing. Well, most of those resorts are open for about another month now, so uh, it's nice to see some of them receiving some fresh snow uh, as well this morning. 12 hour forecast, though, indicating that we are going to be moving toward dry weather for the next 12 hours. Uh, we're staying dry until about tomorrow afternoon and evening because by then we've got that next round of spring like showers headed our way. We'll be talking about where to expect the uh, heaviest amount of uh, rain coming up in just a bit. I'll send things back to you. Evan, thank you so much. Well, happening today, family and friends will celebrate the life of Kittitas County Deputy Ryan Thompson. A vigil will be head, held for him outside the Kittitas City Hall. It's happening at 7 o'clock in the evening. Deputy Thompson was shot in the line of duty last week and then later died. Bank accounts have been set up for his family to help pay for funeral costs. The first major new gun restriction in the U.S. is now in effect. Bump stocks are banned nationwide. The attachments allow semi-automatic weapons to fire continuously. The Las Vegas gunmen used bump stocks to kill 58 people. The Justice Department banned them in December. Governor Jay Inslee signed off on a buyback program giving out $150 vouchers to owners who turned in those devices. As of yesterday, all $150,000 set aside for the program had been spent. The Supreme Court is now considering an appeal to the ban. Coming in new at noon, House Democrats came up short in an effort to override President Trump's veto of a measure to roll back his national emergency declaration at the U.S.-Mexico border. The final vote was 248 to 181. Both the Democratic-led House and GOP-controlled Senate passed resolutions rejecting the national emergency declaration. It prompted the president to issue his first veto earlier this month, so today's vote caps a long struggle for funding to build border, a border wall with Mexico. Well, NASA called off the first ever all-female spacewalk. So it was set to happen this coming Friday. Spokane astronaut Ab McLean and NASA astronaut Christina Koch were set to make history. The reason for the cancellation? NASA leaders say there is only one spacesuit that fits both women. They both use a size medium, and there is only one on board. Last week, McLean conducted her first spacewalk. She said the medium worked best for her. The spacewalk is still scheduled for Friday, but with a different crew. McLean is now scheduled to perform her next spacewalk on April 8th. There is still no word on whether NASA will reschedule an all-female spacewalk. Of course, we'll be tracking that with our local astronauts. Right. Prosecutors dropped all criminal charges today against Empire actor Jesse Smollett. He was facing 16 charges accused of lying to Chicago police about a racist and homophobic attack. Investigators say he staged that attack, and today the Chicago police chief stood by that investigation. And Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel called it a whitewash of justice. However, Smollett maintains his innocence. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I've been accused of. 
Smollett's lawyers say two brothers admitted to the attack, but it's up to prosecutors to file charges. A judge granted a motion to seal the case, so we may never know what really happened. Interesting. All right. 12.05 right now. Yale is the first school to officially rescind the admission of a student linked to the college cheating scandal. More than 50 people are charged, accused of scheming to get underperforming students into elite schools. Yesterday, defendants maintained their innocence in federal court. One dozen coaches and university administrators face racketeering charges, pleaded not guilty. Most of the parents indicted in the scandal will be in court coming up on Friday. Now, two of the most high profile defendants, both Lori Loughlin and Felicity Huffman, are expected in court coming up next Wednesday. Now, Rick Singer, the man at the center of this whole scheme, pleaded guilty and is cooperating with prosecutors. Well, back here locally, two new art installations are nestled against the University District Gateway Bridge. Yeah, they're new. They're on either side of that pedestrian bridge. Krem 2's Kiera L. Fallen tells us about the significance behind the art. Much like the iconic structure in Chicago that many know as the Bean or Cloud Gate, the new sculptures actually allow you to see yourself and your surroundings reflected in them. On the north side of the bridge is the sculpture known as Rooted, where the reflection is anchored toward the ground. On the south side is the sculpture known as Soaring, where the reflection reaches out toward the sky. Local artists Shani Marchant and Leah Ann Scott designed the sculptures. Sadly, Leah Ann passed away a few years ago, but now her work lives on here in Spokane and in many public spaces across the United States. The two shapes of the sculptures are supposed to echo one another. Now the works will be dedicated during an official bridge ceremony in May that will take place on May 7th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So until then, you are welcome to come out and look at the sculptures, of course, yourself. It's also a pretty good photo opportunity. I'll send it back to you. Appreciate that, Kiera. Okay, the Gonzaga women's basketball team is not advancing in the NCAA tournament, but what a game last night. Mm -hmm. You know, and what such mean? a great season. Stayed up even beyond my bedtime. <laughs> uh, it was so good. Because I couldn't stop watching in a nail biter. The team lost to four seed Oregon State University last night in Corvallis. Final score 70 76. The Zags ranked 16th in the final AP top 25 pool of the season. This was the team's third straight appearance in the NCAA tournament, and we just say, what a game. Well done. Well done. What a season. too. Yeah, that was fun. It was really fun to watch last night. Watched it with my little girl. Very cool. Well, as for the men's team, the Zags will face four seed Florida State later this week. If the Zags win, they will move on to the Elite Eight. Tip off is at 4.09 p.m. this Thursday in Anaheim. And you can catch that game right here on Creme 2. You don't even have to change the channel. Right, easy peasy. And we will have pregame coverage before the big matchup on Thursday. That all gets started at 3.30 on Creme 2. We will be covering all things Zags from the Gonzaga campus. That's the place to be. How fun, right? If you can't be in Anaheim, you might as, might well, as well be, be on campus. You. That's right. <laughs> All right, 12.08 right now. A sick orca on the west side is improving. There's some good news. Researchers say they are hopeful, however, still very cautious. We'll have that story.